if you want to solve a pro problem just go from the solution perspective not just the whole uh, data engineering perspective as we know we have hundred of tools and technologies uh, lying around in data engineering field to choose welcome paras so uh, we've been studying in college together and we both had different path and we are both ended up becoming a data engineer so in this podcast we're going to be discussing everything about data engineering what paras does and we will dive deep into that so the first question i have is that uh, we both were together in college and we both became a data engineer but we both had different paths so i want to know about how did you become a data engineer so i would say uh, during my third year i did one internship in that uh, i learned how hadoop works so how distributed system works and everything so that bring me to the distributed system environment but not exactly data engineering i was doing uh, some kind of configuration and everything and documentation that's it but later on i got to know okay, how how it it is getting used in map reduce and everything how hadoop ecosystem works and so yeah pretty much everything and and then after that uh, i joined accenture and there i luckily i got selected in data engineering field and uh, learned about spark and everything spark hive cassandra hadoop ecosystem and everything and yeah i started my journey over there so you you started by saying by you did internship so what was your role in the internship and uh, like you said you worked on hadoop so these days don't many people don't work on hadoop but what was your role initially in hadoop ecosystem so uh, the hadoop uh, what we did was kind of like uh, you know we were like newbies at the time and we didn't know how distributed system and how scalability how horizontal scaling at all works actually we started with linux very at the very start and we didn't know networking at uh, at that age okay and we kind of learned that and uh, learned all the linux commands and everything and then we got to know how hadoop connects with between the system like commodity hardware and everything and then uh, we got to know distributed systems only but okay. i got it very interested how it works and how everything is going on and everything and then uh, i would say my major learning period would be the first two or three months of my uh first career mm -hmm. start point at accenture okay so basically your internship experience helped you also in the yeah. your job here so you got into accenture you started working on all these other things you were working as a hadoop administrator or in in the internship as a hadoop person so when did you first understood about data engineering because we both didn't know about data engineering yeah. we heard the term about big data most of the time but we did not know about the data engineering so how did you hear about data engineering and how the learning process began i would i would not say i heard about data engineering i i kind of do i already was doing data engineering at my work and okay. i got to know this is the field that includes data science ml part and visualization part and everything etl related to it so yeah it's it, it it was a progressive journey but rather than uh, yeah not a definitive so one so basically you wanted to get into data science or machine learning field but, but based on your internship and based on your work you ended up becoming a data yeah, engineer yeah my okay? interest shifted towards data engineering mm -hmm. so in your first job so currently this is this might be your second job you are currently doing yeah. so you in your first job what was your role in data engineering so what was your day to day task look like and the skills that are required to yeah yeah so uh, at the very beginning we we know that we know all but we didn't know anything so i started learning some confluence pages and uh, all around the data pipelines and everything and then uh, i learned about the spark flow how it uh, it went and everything so the system was there were very complex it has two optimized flows and we were working on the second one okay and it it was really optimized but it has some bugs on it and uh, we were kind of getting that batch data every day so the i would if i say the abstract flow of it so we were getting then uh, patch and ifi we have, uh, the source of our data Uh, we were fetching the SFTP and some batch data from SAP systems mm -hmm. and everything, and then uh, we landed it and in the our Hadoop jo Hadoop HDFS landing zones and everything, and then uh, Spark jo as jobs would run, uh, process the data and uh, load it into Hive data warehouse, okay. and then we load it to ter Terra data. Okay. So as I understood, everything was open source. Not yeah. everything was like enterprise tools. So. Yeah. Uh, apache and ifi was basically the source of the data then you had some etl like hdfs them some etl using spark and at the end you were building a data warehouse yeah. so what do you think like the core sco skill required for the data engineers at that point of time so you said spark and everything but the fundamental skills that you need to know to understand this system what do you think about that 
So I would say, uh, first of all, we need to have the understanding of SQL and uh, any kind of coding language like Python and Java, I would say, but yeah, Scala is also the one, uh, but uh, that it will not uh, get, you to, uh, get you into data engineering. Uh, you will also have to learn some uh, scalability and distribution and how uh, MapReduce works and everything. That is a next stage of it. I would not say it's a must, but at the beginning, you should, uh, we should have the understanding of Python and uh, SQL. Okay, so basically start with the basic fundamental and then based on the experience you get in the job or internship, yeah. you can understand your further flow. Yeah. So as I understand, you work with the both Hadoop and Spark. Now, this is the general confusion people have is that should I learn Hadoop first or Spark first? So what is the general difference between both of these systems? Uh, yeah, you would also know that Hadoop and Spark are really different systems. Yeah. Hadoop works, uh, works on commodity hardware rather than Spark is on entirely RAM. Okay. Uh, so there are different processing systems as well, but uh, one tops uh, on the other. So I would say uh, there are similar kind of things, but uh, pretty much different in uh, processing, how the processing framework works and everything. We are currently we are using Spark and Fling and uh, data flow and everything uh, like Apache BM. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the industry standards would, uh, you know, uh, will will be definitely lean towards Spark because it's very fast. And we nowadays have RAM that uh, it's that much capability that we can use Spark very well rather than Hadoop because it's slow. Yeah. So basically, as per my knowledge, Hadoop works on the MapReduce and HDFS. So it takes yeah. a lot of processing time yeah. while Spark everything computes in the memory. Yeah. So yeah, so you moved from open source system, now you work on cloud technology. So I want to understand your first job and second job. So what were your interview process look like? Like uh, how many stages were there? How did you get a job, second job into pure data engineering role? So uh, before that, I was already kind of moved to, you know, cloud and architecture. We were migrating our systems, the lift and shift was happening, but I kind of needed that some broader picture to visualize things and everything. So I moved my, uh, I moved, the opportunity to another job. If I say uh, at this uh, interview process, how it, uh, it was going through. So it was basically like uh, any programming interview. Uh, they uh, they would ask uh, normal coding questions, not like high DSA or algorithm related questions, just general coding questions. And uh, SQL, they, uh, in all data engineering field, they would require SQL. If you don't have coding that coding experience that much, they, would, they will definitely uh, ask you SQL questions. Mm -hmm. And they will, uh, also try to find any uh, if you know any you know hardware or architectural side of uh, data warehouse or hive or bigquery or anything because we need to have the understanding to work on things that it's the best practices that yeah. we have to do okay yeah. so basically understanding of basic basics of coding or basics of dsa and having the strong foundation on sql that yeah. can help you to get a further job so yeah. In your new job, like you might be working with a different project. So how it is different from your previous job in a new job and what do you do day to day in your new job? So uh, currently we are uh, only working on GCP. Uh, we have AWS uh, as well, but uh, majorly we are working on GCP and entirely it's managed and, you know, uh, cloud based. We are not using any kind of legacy systems because it will create general extra additional overhead over it. And uh, day two job, uh, so uh, currently uh, my task would be to, you know, uh, build Airflow DAGs and uh, kind of orchestrate entire process of it, like from the extract to uh, load or extract to transform, mm -hmm. ETL or ELD. And it will, uh, it will you know, uh, jump around the data proc, data flow, mm -hmm. uh, RGCP cloud and architecture, data flow, data proc. Uh, big query, big table, or any other kind of uh, time scale DB mm -hmm. or everything, PostgreSQL SQL or SQL. Okay, so basically, like moving the data through the airflow, doing some yeah. transformation and build, putting it on big query or any of the data warehouse. Yeah. Based yeah. on the requirements. Yeah, yeah, based on the requirement. So, what are the different services on GCP? Like day to day, you work on as a data engineer, you might be working on the selected services because there are like more than 100 services available. So, you should be focusing on based on your requirements. So, what are the services that you work on? So, uh, the major things comes as uh, BigQuery and Dataflow okay. and uh, Airflow. So, for Airflow for scheduling the jobs and everything and monitoring and everything. It provides a great interface and UI to work on. And uh, for ETL, I would say Dataflow and Dataproc, okay. we majorly use. Sometimes, if the data is very easy, then we, we, we should use another services like uh, 
which gcp already provides for just editing the data and loading okay. the new system yeah. but uh, based on the sql or no sql requirement structure or unstructured mm-hmm. data we also use uh, cloud sql bigquery bigtable or other any other uh, open source uh, you know uh, no sql database like mongodb and mm-hmm. uh, timescale db cassandra or hbase or everything okay. so as i understand you use data flow for some basic etl and transformation job and then based on the requirement you might be using uh, data proc to write some spark jobs or hadoop jobs that you might require yeah then you might have like airflow in between to pass the data and then data where so am i right or the architecture might be different so architecture would definitely differ from one system to another okay. so if uh, if i would say it's a streaming or it's a batch job or it's a real time uh, near real time job so it will be definitely different i would include pop sub as well if it's streaming okay. and iot core if we are getting the data from iot services okay. but for iot and pop sub we just need to know the basic of it because it's not like coding intense or anything just we just need to know how it works and how the structure architecture works okay as you as you talked about airflow i want to understand what is the role of airflow because every day you hear like this airflow is booming so there are some of the technologies in data engineering space such as snowflake data warehouse airflow dbt you hear a lot of about them so i want to understand your experience on airflow how did you learn like what is the basic fundamentals that you need to know in the airflow to learn those things so airflow provides very wide range of operators that we need uh, for be day to day to day to day operations for like uh, sft2 sftp servers to our gcp storage uh, you know getting the data from any http operator uh, sorry http uh, request and uh, getting it to any other services that we want to apply on not just aws or not just gcs uh, gcp mm-hmm. but any other kind of services so it it has wide range of uh, operators also it has a lot of flexibility on python operator as well so i would say to start the airflow it's still it's a general thing just a straight structure we would just required uh, how the flow Uh, on the task basis how each flow is scheduled and everything how it goes from one task to another task we just need to schedule it not we will uh, we will kind of think like uh, at the start we will uh, tend to think that it is a flow the data will move from one process yeah. to other process but it's not that we just need to schedule the way it uh, it will run okay so basically uh, you might have some requirement like at 9 am some code should run yeah. and based on that you will get data at every yeah. morning or something like that okay so that so now you already got the job based on the experience you were lucky that you got the role in the accenture for the data engineering and you were able to scale but a lot of freshers find it difficult like they don't know how to start with the data engineering so what will be your advice if they want to start their career into data engineering space so yeah i would say uh i uh, don't say no to anything so if i if i if i will uh, uh, my share my experience to it uh, i was when i was new in second uh, second job uh, i was given the opportunity to work on airflow i didn't know from the scratch how airflow is how airflow works and everything but uh, i learned from the scratch by while doing the hands on only while doing doc reading the docs i didn't do any kind of courses mm-hmm. or anything while just doing the hands on and uh, experimented on some pocs and everything you will uh, you will learn how airflow works and everything same goes for any other system you want to work on you just need to have general understanding how it works and you will just uh, start working on it you will find eventually find the way out so i would say start from the scratch learn python learn sql and then move to how uh, you want to uh, do, uh, do the job not the process entire process will take lot of time because we know there are hundred of system and hundred of uh, tools available that we want to use and uh, it will be best practices to use that tool but if you need it then just learn it okay. for that purpose only yeah. yeah. so as i understand like even if we see the road map of data engineering you will find more than hundreds of tools now you don't have to learn each and everything to become a data engineer yeah. you just need to know the basic fundamentals and then based on the requirement or based on the job that you are trying to apply you find the tool and you start learning it and the best way to learn it just not by watching a video but actually doing it so you can pick some problem start working on that tool start solving that problem using that particular tool so in the case of airflow you might have some data so you can use airflow to maybe do some transformation and then load that data on to data warehouse or somewhere so that might be the case right you yes. to, did the same approach and one more thing i liked is you talked about being open to learning everything because generally when we go and get in the job we always think that we want to do the less work and push yep. that particular work to someone else but 
when you are a fresher or when you just started working it is really important to take whatever comes to your way so that you can learn more and more and in the early stage of your career and grow fast so that was like two good points that i took from that now we have talked about a lot of different things now so what do you think the uh, difference is like you worked on aws also somewhat and gcp so people always think about like should i learn aws should i learn gcp or azure and so many clouds so what is your experience like should you focus on one cloud or also learn the multiple clouds in one go so i would say uh, focus on one because entirely system is just uh, you know uh, mirror of uh, one's other system yeah. so if you use gcp you have bigquery if yeah. you use aws you have athena and everything so yeah. and so so on and so forth yeah. so yeah. vms are there in uh, gcp also and uh, aws also kubernetes is also in and docker is also yeah. in both the systems or yeah. azure as well yeah. so it it just uh, has different naming convention i would say uh, AWS might have more services than GCP but uh, GCP will catch up or Azure will catch up soon and they will also kind of have different approaches or different uh, you know uh, ways to you know solve this same problem but yeah i would say all the clouds are same we just need to uh, learn the basic technologies or basic basic tools of it like learn spark learn like learn hadoop or learn uh, apache beam or flink yeah. or bigquery or sorry sql or python or everything you will uh, you will get uh, understanding of any cloud system there so so yeah that. so basically as i understand you just need to understand the fundamentals of the cloud first yep. so if you know how vpc works because vpc is everywhere i am yes. basic user management object storage such as s3 or google storage or yes. whatever the base. so everything is same in each and every cloud but ui might be different the product name will be different and everything the way they work might be different but fundamentally they work on the same, same concept things. right so yeah so in case if you are confused about picking up one cloud then you can maybe start with let's say aws or gcp or if you are getting an internship or they told you to specifically learn one cloud then you can focus on that there is no need to be hurry in that i should only learn the aws because it has the highest market demand or everything it is completely based on your career path and you need to choose based on that so really like that point because i was working on aws he works on gcp so we both have like different experience but again the knowledge and the fundamental concept always remains the same and so you can easily scale that once you understand that now we already talked about a lot of things so what's your final advice for someone who is watching it you might be in the college or fresher or also have the experience or might be working in some different field but want to get into data science data engineering or just in general data field so what do you will advise for them so i would say uh Just start learning. Uh, start doing some hands-on. Get your hands dirty on systems. If you want to solve a pro- problem, just go from the solution perspective, not just the whole uh, data engineering perspective. As we know, we have hundreds of tools and technologies uh, lying around in data engineering field to choose. But we, in order to know the best practices and best tools for it, we just need to learn how each and every tool works. So in uh, while learning, while they learning the tools and processing, you will get to learn the. architecture and solutions of it and you will get the general understanding how each and every tool works which kind of uh, in a same manner it works in the same manner and it's a distributed fa- it's just a distribution fashion that it works on so i would say start learning yeah okay yeah thank you paras for joining and giving your time there was really good podcast and hope to see you next time yeah. you too you.